VR video tutorial on susceptible, exposed, infected, recovered mortality model. And we're going to deal with the COVID-19 data again. So last time we created a new column and adjusted mortality or adjusted infection uh, column. And we're going to continue on with that. So I'm going to scroll down to where we had left off last time. So if you haven't watched previous video, you're pretty much going to have to do that because I'm skipping over all the code from last time where we read in the data and we grabbed the US data and we reinitialized everything and here's our parameter values and we created our infected. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this up out of our way at the moment. So this affected, uh, I'm gonna move it up here. The reason we didn't put it up here before is because we really needed to think about what our data was. All right, so I have my initial values and what I want to do is start tuning this to match our data. And when I mean tuning this, it's changing these parameter values. I really can't change the population. I can't change any of these really. But I can change these. And now that we've made our model a function, we can just move down to these and generate some pictures. And it should be pretty easy to do this. We just have to reorganize ourselves. Now what I'm going to do is I'm purposely going to reorganize this in a little bit of a different fashion so I can put the values right in my function, then run the function and tune everything together. Okay, so these are my parameter values right now. I'm going to put them in here. So let me copy and paste. This is what I made alpha. This is what I made beta. So is one seventh. Here, gamma is one over 150. And these were just guesses that I had, okay? so. Don't um, think that there's something magical behind them. I, they're just numbers, and I'm going to show you how to tune these uh, so that you can do this. So let's look at the infected. And then we're also going to make plots for the other two. Remember, we have three columns of data. So here I've got everything set up. I'm purposely going to move everything out of the way because this is all we need right now. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And here I'm going to say, well, I'm, not, I'm no longer going to look at the active infections. I'm going to look at the, let's say, recovered. Okay, And I'm going to call, color them like I did before, C green. Okay? And my model, the fact that I made my model have a uh, data frame as the output, I can use this notation. So I know I'm recovered to recovered. And then I'll look at, make this C green as well. And... Do the same thing for the deaths. And I can marry each one of these up or match them up so I can look at them. So this one was recovered. And this one is deaths. Well, will be once we put that in here. Here, I just have to use the dollar sign notation again. Dollar sign and pop up deaths from the tool tab that pops down and dollar sign and this was deaths here and I'm going to color these black and color coding here really helps since we're looking at three different outcome variables at the same time so here's black uh, let's look at see how each one of these looks okay that one doesn't fit very well and this one doesn't fit very well now, as we move things along, we can see how to change things. So basically, as I stare at the infected one, I'm going to try to tune it first. It is too aggressive, okay? Meaning it's it's too aggressive in that it's uh, pulling people out too soon. So what I need to do is make this denominator bigger, okay? So when I make the denominator bigger and rerun this, it will change it. So let's make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make this here, take out the nine, put in a 10 and see what this does to it. Now I'm just trial and erroring at this point. So don't think I'm doing anything special. Okay. So notice it moved it to the right. So now I can keep changing things. I'm going to change this to a two, see what happens. Why did I pick two? I don't know. It's a bit number that's bigger. You could do by one. Okay. Now it's getting closer. What if I wanted it to three? See how close we can get this just by eyeballing it. And we're going to want to eyeball this, by the way, because uh, ultimately you need good starting values for any solver that we would use to try to maximize this. Okay, so maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, but uh, I could easily maybe 
change this to a zero here and get to this point, run this, and no, still not good. But I can maybe change this to a five, right? Notice how I'm just kind of going down and as I get closer and closer, I'm moving farther down in the decimal or in the digits so that I, when I change them, it's not changing them nearly as drastically as if I change the very first number. Okay, so this, mm, I'll say that's reasonably good. Is it really good? No, because it misses out here, but it's kind of going in the right direction right now. Okay, so let's see what that did to the recovered. Now remember, all of these depend on each other, so it's not one depends on only one of the others. Okay, so this one, again, is too aggressive. And recovered, if you remember, was the gamma parameter. So I can make this less aggressive. Because the smaller or the bigger I make the denominator, the smaller this becomes. And then I just go here and it moved it over. Notice that. But it also, if you scroll back, will affect this line too. So these do affect each other. So don't think that one is on, completely independent of the other. So I'm going to make this 350. I'm going to run first the first one. Look at what it looks like. Notice it moved it over some. All right. And I'm getting closer. It does move it out some. Let's go and change it to 550 and see how this world looks in our picture here. So right now I'm focusing on the sea green. Maybe I should go to 750. And notice what I'm doing. I'm just guessing and I'm trying to tune this in to get something reasonable. Maybe I'm going to go bigger and see what happens here. And then I'll probably have to go back and adjust other things. So let's say 1,250, right? And just taking some guesses. It's moving it over there, and then something happened. Oh, it didn't. I didn't run the last line, so I could see the plot on there. Uh, but as you're noticing, as I'm going through this, it is moving it over, well, just like I want. So I'm going to change this to 5 now. I could overdo it if I wanted to, but I'm just easing my way into it. And this is just tuning it. You're just trying to find values that seem to work. So I'm going to change this maybe to 700 and 50. Okay. Still not enough. Maybe I'll make it a 2. See if that goes overboard. Notice that this does take a while, and that's why I'm demonstrating this. This is not a fast process. Okay, so maybe if I make this three is that you even really going to push it out there even farther and that one actually looks pretty good but what did it do to the other one notice that it's pushed this one down so now i have to back this one off okay and it's kind of a dance that you do now let's see what it did to the deaths here because it's going to move everything around it also pushed that one the other direction so I have to sort of dance these two things or three things together, which is why we need this automated fitting idea. So maybe I need to take this one down to a thousand or I put a zero there and run it now. See what it looks like. That's pretty aggressive still. We didn't have it as aggressive as before. And notice now this one changes. So everything has to change and everything has to change together, which makes this in need of a nice automated system. Even though when I did this, the deaths look like they don't match too horribly, even though the others do match uh, horribly. So just keep that in mind that you have to learn how to tune these things, get reasonable starting values, and from there we can create a mechanism to uh, actually fit the model and be able to use it. All right, but we'll save that until the next video. See you then.